The Switch has made gaming the most accessible it's ever been. It's taken home console gaming to the next level because it's also handheld. No longer do you need to divide your time and money into two gaming worlds. It's no wonder the Switch has been so popular. It makes playing games easy, but like everything gaming today, there are options. Nintendo has given us two Switch versions. The standard design that transitions between home and portable gaming, and the other is solely dedicated to handheld play. Though there's more to these two consoles than just those aspects. The Switch was hyped from the beginning. From the bizarre concept description of being a handheld that can also be placed into a dock to play home console games. Then it would have controllers that can detach from the system to be used as separate controllers. The idea seemed mad. This is what I envisioned the Switch being. Though, as it turns out, it works. It actually worked really well. It was and is always being talked about. It had a lot going for it as the previous home console Nintendo made didn't resonate with the gaming community or with people in general. The Wii U had a confusing controller that was marketed towards the casual gaming crowd that embraced the Wii. Could you take the controller and use it as a portable? That's what I initially thought you could do. The Switch on the other hand was handled much better. It was clear from the launch trailer what it was supposed to be. A home console that can be taken on the go. Exactly what I and many others thought the Wii U was. You could continue playing your games while you were out and about. I've always had to budget between a few consoles. Mainly between my home consoles and portables. As someone who frequently travels all over the United States for work, I've heavily relied on portable gaming consoles. When it came to buying games, I've always had to choose between my time at home or my time away from it. Now with this new console, I don't have to choose. I can buy games that I'll actually be able to finish because I don't have to split them apart. I have these games with me always. If I find myself with a little spare time, I can use it to play my games. And let's be honest, if I'm not on the actual planet, I'm not going to be working. The Switch is a great console. It's made up of three main components. The screen, which also houses the console, and the two Joy-Cons. The Joy-Cons are very versatile. They are the default controller for the system. They work attached to the Switch, as well as detached separately in each hand. They can also be played as their own separate controllers. Or put on the Joy-Con grip to transform them into some sort of traditional controller. These work best as portable controllers. They work well in any configuration, but the way I prefer to play the Switch is with the Pro Controller. I pretty much never take the Joy-Cons off the Switch. That's their home and will most likely remain that way. But you don't have to use the Joy-Cons if you don't want to, even in handheld mode. You can use a Pro Controller or any number of third-party controllers available. Speaking of controllers, there are many different varieties you can choose from. As I mentioned a few times already, the Pro Controller is my personal go-to when I play any Switch game. It's ultra comfortable and feels like a premium product. I like how they made the grips look as if they're wrapped in leather. I also like the transparent shell, though the D-pad leaves a little to be desired. I mainly use this controller for Switch specific titles. For the retro games on the Switch Online service, I use the first party NES and SNES controllers that are available on Nintendo's online store. These games were made specifically with these controller designs in mind. You can't beat the feeling of playing a Super Nintendo game with a Super Nintendo controller. There are also third-party controller variants for every one of these controller types, which function generally well. I personally like to stick with the first-party official Nintendo controllers, but the third-party options will get the job done. The big feature of this Nintendo console is the ability to play it on a TV. With the included dock, all you need to do is place it into the bottom. This is huge. As I've already mentioned, this makes gaming convenient. Thanks to the sleep feature, you can stop your game at any point and continue playing it where you left off anywhere you go, at any time. This is exactly how the 3DS treats its sleep mode, which I've found very useful when I've had limited time on airplanes and in airports. Continuing gameplay from the TV to the handheld is as seamless as it gets. The benefit of both gaming styles is the reason why the Switch has been so popular. The one big drawback to the original Switch, however, is the battery. It has 2.5 to 6.5 hours of battery life. Depending on which game you play, you'll fall within those parameters, which isn't ideal but can be worked around. If you use an external power bank, you can charge your Switch anywhere, though that adds another peripheral you need to pack around. I'm also not sure if you have to use the officially licensed power banks, or if you can just use one you have lying around. I've read that any power bank will work, but I'm not going to take the risk on something that's $300 and is currently in short supply. If it damages my Switch, I would be very stressed out trying to find a replacement. With all the known issues with third-party docks, I don't think I'm willing to test it out. So there's another added cost to extend the battery life.
The Switch has been popular ever since it launched in 2017. With that success, Nintendo decided to update it. This new revision looks identical to the original. It even operates pretty much the same. But it has one major difference that sets it apart. The battery is significantly better. When playing Breath of the Wild, the original model would get around 3 hours of playtime. Though not bad by any means, it was limiting. The revised Switch can play Breath of the Wild for around 5.5 hours. That's drastically better. The battery is marketed to last from 4.5 to 9 hours, as opposed to the original that was marketed to last anywhere from 2.5 hours to 6.5 hours. This increased battery life version has now completely replaced the original Switch in stores. With this new version, there's really no need to carry around any power bank. In mid-2019, Nintendo announced that it would be releasing a brand new Switch console. This new console would be a handheld only. It wouldn't be able to switch between a home console and a handheld unit. It wasn't packaged with a dock, just the charger. They named it the Switch Lite. It's an ultra-sleek solid-body version, one that's solely focused on being a handheld. It's smaller, doesn't have HD rumble, the Joy-Cons are permanently attached to the console, and the biggest change, it can't be docked to output video to a TV. These are major changes to the console. It's made people wonder why it was made in the first place. It's a Switch that doesn't switch. That's the namesake of the console. But when you start looking into it, seeing what its true purpose is in the market, it becomes a little clearer. The console's priced at $200, which justifies the revisions. In all reality, you don't need the cut features to play in handheld mode. This is simply a portable console, something that Nintendo has offered for decades. They've led the handheld market with every handheld they've ever made. When thought of in this respect, it really comes out as being a great product. If you're looking to play the latest games and you don't care about playing on a TV, the Switch Lite is perfect. Its build feels right. This is a Nintendo handheld. The Switch Lite's refined design is one of the best feeling handhelds I've ever used. Better than any Game Boy, DS, or 3DS system. Even better than the original Game Boy Advance. It has a smaller form factor than the original Switch, which in my opinion, is a better size for a portable system. It's perfect for packing around in a carry-on. Also, it doesn't feel unwieldy when I play it. I personally think the standard Switch is slightly too big. Not that it's not playable or ideal. With portability in mind, the Switch Lite is better built for it. The Joy-Cons have been fused to the body. The left one also has a proper D-pad, even if it's placed quite low. This is ideal for classic games that are offered with the Switch's online service. Even the bezel is better in my opinion, it's not glossy all the way around it. The rumble really isn't a big deal being absent. It's great having that feedback during play sessions, and it does enhance gameplay, but it's not necessary for a portable console. If you prefer to play your games with a different controller, the Switch Lite can pair with other controllers. They have to be wireless, but you have the flexibility to play with your preferred controller. The real trick is figuring out how to stand the Switch Lite up. This console doesn't have a kickstand, though when the original Switch launched, I couldn't go a day without hearing about how, quote, awful it was. The Switch has a minimal footprint. We're lucky it has a kickstand at all. I think the Switch Lite is fantastic for $200. Comparing it to the 3DS, the new 3DS XL was $200. The Switch Lite is the same price as a console that only plays portable games. That means, if you ever get a Switch that you can connect to a TV, those same games will work on your TV. So is the Switch Lite worth owning over the standard Switch? Well that depends on what you want. The Switch Lite is a great handheld. Some of my favorite consoles have been handhelds. However, with most of my portable systems, I like to play those games on a TV. Going back to the Game Boy, I used the Super Game Boy quite a bit to play those games. I then used the Game Boy Player for the GameCube. I even downloaded DS games on my Wii U to play them on my TV. Unfortunately, Nintendo never made a way for us to play 3DS games on a TV. But that hasn't tarnished my views of those games. In fact, they're some of my favorites. I own all three Switch systems. I use both styles in different specific situations. I think I've struck a nice balance between them. I pre-ordered the original Switch. There was too much hype surrounding it, so I gave in and got it on launch. It's the only console I've picked up at launch. I used it quite a bit when I traveled, but I really didn't like packing it around. So I was gifted a Switch Lite to see if that worked better for me. I'll attest that it is better suited for travel. The size alone is so much better for my needs while I'm on the go. I typically only use it when I travel because I don't really need it around the house. My standard Switch is always in the dock, so I usually play it on the TV. Switching games back and forth also isn't as bad as most people on the internet think. If you buy physical games, it's actually quite easy. 
You can transfer over game saves, which admittedly is kind of a pain, but I don't usually do that anyway. I kind of like the challenge of starting a new game. There is one thing I don't like about using two systems. If you go with digital games, you have to check in to play them. I've talked about this before, but it's worth talking about now. I really don't like this about the whole setup for the Switch. If I buy a game, I should have access to it. If I bought two Switch consoles, that game should be on both. I just invested double the money most people will spend on Switch consoles. Why would I be punished for doing it? It's easy to check in, but I loathe having to confirm that I can play it. This also applies to the classic games on the Switch's online service. I missed out on playing those retro games on one of my trips and it really bothered me. With that aside, I've really liked having both of these Switch consoles. The Switch has made gaming the most accessible it's ever been. It's taken home console gaming to the next level because it's also a handheld. No longer do you need to divide your time and money into two gaming worlds. It's no wonder the Switch has been so popular. It makes playing games easy. But, like everything gaming today, there are options. Nintendo has given us two versions of the Switch. The standard design that transitions between home and portable gaming. The other is solely dedicated to handheld play. If you decide to go with either the standard or light version, I think you'll find that it doesn't really matter how you're playing. What matters is you're playing the amazing games the console has to offer.